Now, we need to make decimal number bonds to 1. So first, 0 0.294 plus what equals 1 whole? What I like to do is solve these by counting on. So if we start at 0 0.294 and first add 0 0.006, so 6 thousandths, that gives us 0 0.300, just as 294 plus 6 equals 300. But we don't usually write zeros on the end of decimals, so we have 0 0.3. Now from 0 0.3, if we add 0 0.7, that gives us 1.0, which is the same as one whole. So we added 6 thousandths, no hundredths, 7 tenths, and obviously no ones, so we added 0 0.706 to get to 1, so that's our missing number. Now we start with 0 0.538. If we take that and add 0 0.002, so two thousandths, that gives us 0 0.540, just as 538 plus 2 is 540. But we don't need to write zeros on the end of decimals. Now, from 0 0.54, we can add 0 0.06, so six hundredths, and that gives us 0 0.60, just as 54 plus 6 gives us 60. We don't need to write zeros on the end of decimals, but now from 0 0.6, we can just add 0 0.4, so 4 tenths, and that gives us 1.0 or 1 whole. So we can add what we added. We added 2 thousandths, then 6 hundredths, then 4 tenths. So, altogether, we added 0 0.462. The other way to solve these is to take 1 and subtract 0 0.294. So we need to write the 0 ones in our decimal underneath the 1 whole so that our place value columns are lined up. Now 1 is the same as 1.000. You can always write a decimal point and then zeros on the end of a whole number because all the zeros tell us here is that in the number 1, we don't have any tenths, hundredths, or thousandths. But now, we can copy down the decimal point into our answer and subtract using column subtraction. We can't do 0 minus 4 using the column method, and if we go to the left, we have a 0, then another 0. So, we need to exchange our 1 whole for 10 tenths, then exchange one of those tenths for ten hundredths, and exchange one of those hundredths for ten thousandths. Now, ten minus four is six, nine minus nine is zero, nine minus two is seven, and zero minus zero is zero. So that gives us 0 0.706, so the same answer. Now, for this question, we could have solved it by working out one minus 0 0.538. Now 1 is the same as 1.000. We can copy down the decimal point. Now we can't do 0 minus 8, so we exchange, then exchange again, and again. And now 10 minus 8 is 2, 9 minus 3 is 6, 9 minus 5 is 4, and 0 minus 0 is 0. So again, we get our missing number. Now let's look back at this first question. We started with 0 0.294 and needed to make one whole. First we added 6 thousandths, so if we add 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 thousandths, we now have 10 thousandths, so we can exchange those for one hundredth. But doing that means that we now have 10 hundredths, so we can exchange those 10 hundredths for one tenth. So adding the six thousandths gave us 0 0.3 or three tenths. Then we added seven tenths, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and that gave us 10 tenths, which is the same as one whole. So because we added six thousandths and then seven tenths, our missing number bond is 0 0.706. Then we started with 0 0.538. 
so that's five tenths, three hundredths, and eight thousandths. First, we added two thousandths. When we do that, we get ten thousandths, which is the same as one hundredth. So that leaves us with four hundredths, and with the five tenths, gives us 0 0.54. Then we added six hundredths, so if we add one, two, three, four, five, six hundredths, that means we have ten hundredths, so can exchange those for one more tenth. So that gives us 0 0.6, because we have six tenths. Finally, we added 0 0.4, so that's four tenths. And that gives us 10 tenths, which is the same as one whole. So, because we added 2 thousandths, then 6 hundredths, then 4 tenths, our missing number bond was 0 0.462.